Hi everybody, welcome to <laughs> welcome everybody to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we have a great show, stock stock full of information about hormones. So we have Dr. Carolyn Dean, and she is here talking about a book that she wrote a while ago in 2005, but still a ton of really really good information about hormones. So welcome, Dr. Dean. Well, CJ, you have to call me Carolyn. I will. Don't worry. I just started off with Dr. Dean. I will call you Carolyn from here on out. <laughs> yes, it was a 2005 book and 10 years ago now. And I think some of the criticism of that book is women expected me to talk about bioidentical bio hormone replacement and how they could be taking estrogen, progesterone in order to deal with their symptoms. And... I think that's way down the line. Yes. There's so much that happens with the hormones before you have to get to that point. Mm -hmm. And that's actually the thing that I appreciate most about your book because I'm now 51, which is I understand the average age when women start hitting perimenopause perimenopausal systems or premenopausal or whatever you want to call it. And I'm definitely getting, I'm getting hot flash before menses, all those kinds of things. And so... I feel like your book came at the perfect time where I can now try a whole bunch of things, preventative measures, so that I don't have to have bioidentical hormones or hormone replacement therapy. Because I think there are a bunch of things that you should try, like you said, before you even get to that point. Um, and that's one thing I'm so thank you, thank you, thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I think part of the problem is, as as we both know that women will become so stressed, so busy, that they do just want a pill or, or something quick, quick fix. But as we're coming to know more and more, when you do take a, a medication, even though it's said to be bioidentical, supposedly natural, it still is not your own hormones. Right. So yes, See, there's so much more. The there's so many more natural, truly natural things that we could do in terms of diet, eliminating toxins, exercise. That your book lists that I think that's and supplements. It means so many things that we can do before we get there, and that's what's most exciting because it's something within our control. Whereas I feel like hormones are kind of this confusing thing. It's like this this thing that we hit. And and what I realized from reading your book is that. We don't, I, I didn't know anything about hormones, really. And so I wanted to ask you just, you know, because I think most of us, when we read books about hormones, we, you know, for me, at least my own experiences, I had a hot flash. And then all of a sudden I became interested in hormones because I had one of the symptoms of them. But I, I was surprised to see that, that actually, and sorry for my ignorance here, because I'm not a, a doctor, is that there's hormones in our, in our gonads. So for women, it's in our ovaries and for men, it's for in our testes and when people talk about hormone imbalances they're typically talking about that mm. right yes so right away they're specializing yes they're, they're compartmentalizing those little gonads right that's everything and um i don't know how much i talked about it in the hormone balance book but certainly since then i've been talking about the triad and we'll get to this, but yeah. just to, to start with, the triad of, of thyroid, adrenals, and sex hormones. Mm -hmm. And so let's so, talk about first about the, the sex hormones, because that's the one that we're most familiar, and everyone's like, tell me, tell me about this. Right. So what is happening for, um, I wanted to do look at both women and men and figure out what's happening Mm -hmm. for women with their hormones. And there's a, and what I thought was interesting that I never even made the connection, there's something happening, you know, not, I'm talking about when we hit our 30s and 40s, I know there's things that are happening in puberty and such, but when we hit potentially 30, 40, 50, there's a perimenopausal thing that's happening, then there's a menopausal thing that's happening, and they're different in terms of hormones. What's happening? What's happening to me? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's this there's this medical thing that you can describe or the physiologic thing that I learned in medical school. And then there's the real thing that's happening. Because uh, in the textbook, um, what they say is women have their estrogen and their progesterone and there's a balance of the two. When you're pregnant, your progesterone goes sky high. And progesterone is kind of a feel-good sex hormone. So that's why 
um, most women feel good during pregnancy. Right. And then there's the aftermath. <laughs> <laughs> and so the estrogen uh, is said to be, you know, not opposite of that. But then uh, what, what's happening now, women are talking about estrogen dominance. Mm -hmm. where you don't have as much progesterone as you do estrogen, and then the estrogen dominance is causing women to suffer weight gain and bloating and maybe some of the insomnia and symptoms that we correlate with menopause. Those are premenopausal symptoms, right? Or are well, they pre and post? Pre and post, yes, okay. because it's... Um, and, and again, that's all tied up in the reality of why the, the hormones go out, out of balance. Now, supposedly as we age, our estrogen goes down. And that's why in the 50s, the, the um, doctors who discovered estrogen and made it into a synthetic estrogen, first it was the estrogen from pregnant mare's urine. Mm -hmm. That premarin, right. people may remember that name, that came from pregnant mares. Right. And when I guess that source dried up, right. they, <laughs> they began looking at the synthetic estrogen. Mm. And it wasn't for decades that they finally realized, oops, estrogen alone without progesterone is causing cancer. Mm. And so they, instead of adding natural progesterone, because, you know, they, that's hard to come by, they use synthetic progesterone, and supposedly it, it helped um, balance the estrogen, but it still wasn't a cure, and it still has its side effects. Mm. So then in the natural medicine community, doctors started talking about bioidentical hormones, bioidentical estrogen and progesterone and testosterone, and all that meant is that uh, making the estrogen, progesterone, testosterone from something like wild yam uh, chemicals. And it's still a chemical, right. but instead of coal tar, they made it from wild yams. It sounds better, but right. it's, it is still a chemical, and supposedly it is safer, but we don't even have the studies to prove that. Mm. Mm. So, you know, just the, sort of the, the end run is if, if you are on bioidentical, just take it. Take a smidgen. You know, if you're told to take a whole cc of, of uh, a bioidentical cream and slather it on your body, take a quarter of a cc and see how your body feels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I was on. I actually had a period where I was on bioidentical hormones for a short period of time, and oddly, it resolved itself. But I, the, the, the doctor was screaming at me because I'm like, I'm just using, you know, a quarter of what you say. And she's like, no, use exactly what it said. I'm like, that's what's been tested. I'm like, I don't know, but I don't like using a lot of these medicines. So I'm seeing the minimum that I could do and still have the results. And she's like, Wah. when we got into a big argument and then I was like, I forget it. I'm not taking these anymore. And then, <laughs> and then my issue, my issue resolved itself oddly. But mm -hmm. so going back to, so for women, there's, and, and what's so interesting is so perimenopause is this like delicate dance between your progesterone and estrogen. It's either mm -hmm. you have estro too much estrogen or too little progesterone. That's what happens mm -hmm. perimenopause. And then after you hit menopause, which is defined as you haven't had your period in a year, then mm -hmm. what, what's happening to your hormones? Well, the, I think that's where the environmental toxins kick in mm. because there, there are toxins that mimic estrogen. Oh. And they're called xenoestrogens. Mm -hmm. And they can, you know, they can be plastics. They can be medications. They can be um, just toxins in the environment. They oh. can be yeast toxins from yeast overgrowth. I get it. Okay, got it. So... After your after your you hit um, menopause and you don't have periods, that, then you actually could actually have excess estrogen, but it's not necessarily produced by your gonads, your ovaries, or whatever. It's actually produced through external factors. Exactly, mimicking okay. the mimicking the estrogens and um, even making your own hormones is um, is touch and go these days because. Um, if you don't take the proper fats, 
then you're not going to have the building blocks for your hormones. Cholesterol fat is the building block for all our sex hormones. Mm -hmm. So you take the group of women out who are being told to take statin cholesterol drugs. Oh. Their cholesterol is going to be low. Their hormones are going to be low. They're going to be suffering. What is it? What is it? What is it? <laughs> I, it seriously, I, I could be listing dozens of things, and I won't because I'll just say it's toxins. You have to detoxify. Right. You cannot imagine that you can be healthy when you're taking you know half a dozen medications or when you're eating a bad diet and when it's all fried food and, and right. donuts. <laughs> My favorite. Okay, so it sounds like and what's so interesting to me, and this is the big aha from reading your book, is that you know, it's so much easier to go, oh, it's I'm getting older. It's because my progesterone and estrogen are out of balance and it's because I'm aging, but they're but you pointed out a bunch of different factors. It's the medications that we're taking, like um, statin. If we're taking that, could actually create a hormonal imbalance. It's what we're eating that could actually cause a hormonal imbalance. It's mm -hmm. it's um, it's the mm -hmm. external factors, toxins. Yeah, and yeast overgrowth. And yeast overgrowth. You think of the number <laughs> of women who take antibiotics and then, oh yeah, I get some vaginitis, that's normal, my doctor just gives me a medication for it, and on they go, without realizing that. In their intestines, they're producing 178 different uh, yeast byproducts, mm. 178, and each one of those can act kind of like an allergen or some sort of toxin to the body. There's alcohols and acid aldehyde. Acid aldehyde causes brain fog. It's known as the hangover chemical in people who drink alcohol. Right. So you're getting brain fog, oh, is this menopause? I mean, again, there's so many interactions and, and I'm not going to dwell on them. And we'll, I'll say the same about thyroid. When your thyroid is low, you have all these symptoms. I just treat I just treat people for mineral deficiency, toxicity, and put them on a yeast program, and that's it. I mean, the solution, um, you know, to my mind is simple. You know, I've worked this out. I've been at this for fifty years, <laughs> five oh years, <laughs> and yes, I am in menopause. Right. <laughs> I've been there. I went in. I went through menopause at forty-five. Yeah, and it sounds like from reading your book, there are lots of things that you. I mean, you hit you hit a lot of the common symptoms that people and and hit it hard, right? And so, it's interesting to hear that. You know, so before you try the bioidenticals or the hormone replacement therapy, it's about you know diet. It's about yeast, getting your yeast down, which is part of diet. It's about minerals. I mean, those are the first lines of attack. Okay. So I want to go back to what's happening. So as I understand, let me see if I can summarize this. So what women have this perimenopause and menopause, but basically perimenopause or estrogen and progesterone is doing this very delicate dance just from our gonads alone, not in, in, in taking into account all these other things that are exogenous to it, like toxins and things like that. Um, now, one of the things that people always ask is, how long does it last? And, yeah. and and it's a mystery, right? Is there a definitive answer or is there a way that we can control how long it lasts? Well, it's, uh, I guess doctors who prescribe the, the uh, synthetic hormones or even bioidentical, that's why your doctor said, take the full amount. Right. Because they're trying to suppress the symptoms mm. more than anything. And they know that it takes a certain, you know, hammer and tong thing to right. suppress the symptoms. And what you want to do is strike a balance with uh, going through diet and detox and remineralization and then get to the point where whatever's left over, then you treat mm. with the bioidenticals. And at that point, you don't even take it, uh, a pill. You don't slather your whole body. I do recommend very low dose vaginal cream. 
and bioidentical um, estrogen, progesterone, you can even use a bit of testosterone. And that way you prevent vaginal atrophy and the pain of intercourse. Right. And you, it's absorbed through your body so that it, it can stop the hot flashes. But you see, if especially using it vaginally, mm -hmm. if you take a little too much, your breasts are going to feel tender. You don't mm -hmm. want that. Right. And so that's what doctors should be saying to women. Uh, maybe take, take enough that, that you feel a little bit of breast tenderness and then back off. Right. Because you know mm. then it's hitting the areas in your body that are sensitive to the hormones, which is your breast. Right. That's brilliant. You're brilliant. <laughs> I guess 50 years of all this hard work is, is paying off. Okay, what, what's happening? And what's yeah, happening to Beth? I am brilliant. You're brilliant. Well, no, because that really makes sense. Because literally when I was doing the bioidentical, they had me doing it in my inner thighs. And it was a lot. Like, you know, probably a palm full of, you know, like one squirt of a, you know, Pump, you know, yeah. of lotion, you know, boom, you know, all over my legs. And one was on my left leg and right leg. Depending on the, I mean, it was just absurd. But, and, and it was would, a lot. If you're in a hot climate, I mean, here I am in Maui. It would yeah. be just dripping down my legs with sweat. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't even want to think about that. Okay. <laughs> for men, what's happening to men? So my husband's like, well, what's happening for me with my hormones? I'm like, I don't know. I'll ask doctor. I'll ask Carolyn. Well, it's it's similar. The the testosterone, it, uh, you can have some um, geno testosterone. You right. can have testosterone in the environment that's blocking your own testosterone. It's um, in men, it's even worse because so many more of them are on statin drugs, mm. so their cholesterol is bottoming out. So it's cleaning up the diet, and um, I really don't have a a good um, focus on on uh, testosterone hormone replacement for men because I've seen some studies they say oh yes it's it's okay to do there's no side effects and other studies well we don't know yet so it it's a difficult thing to um, to pinpoint or generalize on you mm -hmm. would have to uh, look at each individual you would do the hormone studies at, at one point I was doing a lot of saliva testing on people mm -hmm. and finding out um, for example through the month they would do uh, a series of saliva samples because the hormones are all over the place right and you know you don't want to just go in uh, at a certain point of the the day and, and take a blood sample of your hormones because it could be different within a couple of hours Okay, then and how valid are those tests then? Or, or how do you take the test so that they're valid? And that I really don't know. I mean, it's almost like you have to, to test every day for a month for a woman to see what the cycling is. Uh, because a woman, even with a hysterectomy who doesn't have a menstrual period, they'll say, well, my hormones are still cycling. So the, the hormones have a, do have a mind of their own. And I really, I gave up doing the blood test for hormones because I just, I just go to my plan of remineralization and hydration and detoxification and the yeast program. Mm -hmm. And so if you do, so basically the, the test, and, and, and I was reading a bunch about the test, it seems like hour by hour, your hormones mm -hmm. could change depending on where you are in your menstrual cycle your mm -hmm. test could change depending mm -hmm. on the day of the month, depending on the moon. Like it seems like your hormones uh, could change. Yeah, they're, they're, they're so dead. the saliva test and the blood test have those same problems because regardless of whether you're measuring, what are they really measuring? I, I don't know. What are they measuring? Well, um, the saliva people and, um, who is it? The uh, Meridian lab up in, um, Seattle way, Dr. Jonathan Wright, mm -hmm. he started um, measuring the metabolites of the, the hormones, okay. like the breakdown, you know, what did they break down into? And then he started identifying, oh, they break down this way because you're deficient in magnesium okay. or this way because you're deficient in B6. And then there's zinc comes into it. All these minerals are important. So again, instead of spending hundreds of dollars and trying to analyze the tests. I just gave everybody, well, 
they're magnesium, right. and it takes some zinc, and takes some B6, but in, in small amounts. I mean, my, and I eventually, after about 45 years of this, I finally created some of my own products so that I know exactly what to give people and, and what they're getting, because mm -hmm. it's all about the absorption. If you aren't absorbing your minerals, like calcium, for example, we got into a horrendous problem with calcium supplementation. And it's only in the past decade that we've seen at least half a dozen studies that show women who are popping calcium pills are at high risk for heart disease because the calcium only absorbs like about 4%. And the other 96% is causing constipation, deposits in tissues. Uh, this business about DCIS, uh, breast uh, pre-cancer, right. it's calcification right. caused by too much calcium in the diet. Yeah. Need magnesium. Yeah. That's the answer. Right. Okay. I learn. I'm learning from you. Okay. So it sounds like the symptoms then for men, so the symptoms for women, I was reading through your list of symptoms of which there are many that are happening for women are um, menstrual irregularities, menstrual cramps, heavy periods, light periods, vaginal dryness, vaginal thinning. Um, these are all the kinds of things that happen. Perimenopause. Um, what's, what's happening with my hormones that's causing this well, they like are all these out of balance, and I don't think you can anymore just say uh, your estrogen is getting low and your progesterone is getting low too. It's the relationship of the estrogen to the progesterone, and when you start getting the synthetic or the xenoestrogens, it just widens that gap. Mm. even more mm. and the solution is not just to give a whole bunch of progesterone I mean that's what a lot of um, natural medicine doctors thought for many years Dr. John Lee he was doing research on giving progesterone I mean when I was in my uh, family practice oh, gosh in the, in the 80s I was giving women progesterone suppositories <laughs> they okay. did not have yeah yeah in Europe, they're, they're yeah. into suppositories, but yeah. not North America. <laughs> uh, so they didn't have progesterone orally or in transdermal form to treat PMS. Mm. So I studied um, Katrina Dalton's work, and she was all about progesterone suppositories for people with terrible PMS. Uh, because their um, progesterone was low and their estrogen was high. So I started very early on looking at the hormones. And, um, and I really think at this point, it's got so much to do with uh, yeast blocking our estrogen or increasing our estrogen it, with um, the xenoestrogens, which can come from plastics. And, you know, we're covered in plastics. Mm -hmm. And... Even this business about perimenopause as a designation, that was a made-up term. Mm -hmm. There really is no such thing as perimenopause. But it's, um, it's almost like the medical community decided to, to um, institutionalize and right. medicalize everything about women from you know, pu puberty and, and then pregnancy and then, oh, now you're perimenopause and now you're menopause and it's all over. Right. I mean, I've been in menopause for, for 20 years and it's certainly not all over. Right. I'm not feeling healthier now than I did when I was major stressed out in my 40s. Right. So. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There's, um, I, I, you know, I guess I'll probably say it a half dozen times in our discussion here that. It's, it's some basic remedies of hydration, mineralization, uh, cleansing, and uh, treating yeast. But, you know, when you say to someone, well, you can, um, you can deal with this uh, with your diet or there's certain lifestyle things you can do, you really have to grab their attention. And I don't grab attention by yelling at people or, or threatening them. Mm -hmm. I just offer the information. Right. And you can take it or leave it. Right. Uh, 
I thought uh, a couple of years ago, I really thought that education was the way I was going to get across this information. And look, I've written 33 books. I've got 108 Kindles. I mean, I'm writing, writing, writing all the time. Actually, this um, interview gave me a, a, such an idea for uh, a new book. And I'm just in still books now. Because when you said you wanted to focus on menopause and perimenopause, I said, oh my gosh, nobody's asking me directly about those conditions anymore. Mm -hmm. I do not hear people say, oh, I've got menopause symptoms, what can I do? They are saying, my adrenals are shot, my thyroid is low, um, you know, I, I may have Lyme disease, you know, they, it's fibromyalgia, I've got chronic fatigue, it's all these, these huge expansive problems, and then they'll say, yeah, and I have some hot flashes. Wow, oh, interesting. Yes. Wow. So, wh what I did then is I went back to, um, actually I wrote a paper years ago that I wanted to publish in the Canadian Medical Journal, and it was about my experience with yeast overgrowth, mm -hmm. and I called it clinical clinical findings in 2,000 cases of candidiasis. And what that showed me, let me turn off my mail because I'm getting boring. Um, the 2,000 cases of candidiasis showed me that the symptoms that people were having were being added on to from what I, okay, what I started off with in my medical practice in 1979 was people who were complaining of hypoglycemia and allergies. Mm -hmm. A couple of years later, um, I started to look at yeast overgrowth, and then it was chronic fatigue, and then it was fibromyalgia, and then it was adrenal exhaustion and thyroid uh, deficiency, hypothyroidism. And then it became everything all together. Mm. So that when a person these days goes to uh, HMO and says, you know, these are my top 20 symptoms, what does the doctor do in their seven minute appointment? But sends them off to a specialist for this symptom or that symptom, or right away says, well, this is a hypochondriac, you know. <laughs> take right. some Prozac. Right. <laughs> and because it just does not seem possible that people have all these symptoms, mm. but they do, they do, they do. And what I, somehow I, I, become the uh, the doctor a resort doctor yes last time. resort help me yeah yeah doctor of last resort and um, so I've had to uh, focus down give people solutions and I instead of tra um, you know tracking down every symptom and find out where it came from I was very fortunate because I was well versed in yeast overgrowth and then because of my own heart palpitations magnesium became huge in my life yes. and in my research and you know come to find out that a lot of this anxiety that women have magnesium deficiency too much calcium magnesium uh heart palpitations magnesium Mm. It's just on and on and on. Right. Um, so the, the symptoms that we're thinking, oh, it's menopause. I have foggy brain because I have menopause. I have heart, I'm stressed out because I have menopause. It's like, no, it actually could be a magnesium deficiency. Exactly. Exactly. So that what happens when you're of the age of menopause, your doctor right away is going to put you in the menopause yeah. basket. Mm. Because it's easier to do that. It's easier to send you to gynecologist than... And I, I have serious doubts about what's going to be happening in medicine. Uh, I went with a friend um, the other day to her first primary care visit because she wanted a, a dermatology um, appointment or referral, mm -hmm. and she wanted to get her colonoscopy. And the primary care doctor, a very nice woman, sat way across the room, did not get up to examine her, 
And my friend, I was in the room too. She said, well, shall I come over there so you can examine my, my skin? Oh, no, no, no. I'll get the technician to come in and take a picture of it and send it to the dermatologist and they'll decide whether you should be seen. What? <laughs> I know. I wish I taped it. Oh, and my God. That's bizarre. awful. And this is after she had her weight taken with her clothes and shoes on in a dirty hallway, her blood pressure taken over her clothes. And this, this is medicine. This is Yikes. medical care these days. So you, we're on our own. Okay, so I have a question for you. I think this is the tie into what you said, but I'm not sure. And, and I learned something about the endocrine system. I didn't even know it existed. I, but <laughs> So the endocrine system, what I found... Tell me if I'm wrong, because I'm not a medical person at all or scientific. So the endocrine system is what produces hormones. And there's pituitary gland, thyroid, parathyroid, pancreas, and adrenal glands that are creating these hormones. So if we have a hormone and imbalance, it can be any of those things. Like if I'm having hot flashes, it can be any of those things that are causing it. Is that right? Yes, to a certain extent, but... Uh, you can't isolate them because what what can happen is um, you can get an adre- adrenal rush from your adrenal glands that causes your heart to palpitate and your pulse to rise and you can get a flush and that can be a hot hot flush feeling which makes makes you think it's a hot hormonal flush. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Whereas you know the the thyroid when it gets deficient you can get cold, cold hands and feet, and you want to be warmed up, you look forward to the hot flashes. Right. <laughs> but you're, you're right, and the, the pituitary pineal in the brain, they orchestrate the, the drive on the hormones. If your thyroid is starting to get weak, um, the pituitary pushes your thyroid to work harder, and that can kind of make you race for a while. Uh, there's there's a situation with the thyroid. Sometimes it's it's hyper, and sometimes it's hypo, mm. and it it does make it tricky. But again, it's balance, balance, balance. Right, but it's unclear what's the cause. It could we may think, like you said, I would go. I think I'm mapping this back to what you said before. I could go to a doctor and like, oh, menopause. Go, go get your hormones measured with that blood test. Goodbye. Whereas mm-hmm. you would say, oh, gosh, it could be your thyroid. It could be all these different things that are causing the symptoms of hot flashes or chronic fatigue or any of those things because it's all this orchestration of all these things in your endocrine system. Did I get it right? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. And then what, um, what doctors uh, can do, even natural medicine doctors, I've had um, clients come to me and say, well, my doctor said my adrenals are low, my thyroid is low, my sex hormones are low, but first I have to treat such and such. And I said, there's no first about the body. It's all kind of interacting. It is not going to stop and let you treat one thing and not treat the other. So... Maybe they're thinking about you know bioidentical hormone replacement, and in the thyroid world, that's what a lot of natural medicine doctors did. They said, "Oh, these synthetic thyroid hormones—they're bad. Let's use natural, like Armour Thyroid, and not so much bioidentical. I should say it's more like a desiccated thyroid Armour Thyroid product." Hmm. And they thought that's the that's the key. And then I, I get all these patients say, well, I can't even take armor thyroid. You know, what's wrong? And in my mineral research, I realized that there are nine minerals that support the thyroid. Nine. Mm. And what do you think when you think of thyroid? What, what mineral do you think of? Iodine. And then people are pumping I mean, mega doses of iodine. Yes. And what happens? Well, it helps. It helps some, and it hurts some. And I don't like to be giving something that can hurt anybody. Right. So when I look at the thyroid, you need your iodine, yes. But the pathway from iodine to the next step, it needs selenium, and the next pathway needs manganese, and another pathway needs copper, magnesium, of course. Right. 
So myself, when when I after I created my my 100% absorbed magnesium, I went into multiple minerals. Wow. And I put in 12 minerals. Nine of them are for the thyroid, but it's not just a thyroid supplement. But two months into taking my Remite, it's called, R-E-M-Y-T-E, mm-hmm. I was able to get off my 60 milligrams of armor thyroid. Mm. And I hadn't even thought about it, actually. Just one day, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm a little more hyperactive than usual. You know, I'm a little speedier. My body, right. my health is elevated. So, right. um, you know, being a, a typical doctor, I just quit it instead of weaning off, as I would tell my patient. <laughs> Okay, so this goes back to, okay, if you're, and this is so interesting, so if you're having these symptoms, right, whether it's weight gain, hair loss, vaginal dryness, periods, what, osteoporosis, all these things that people attribute to, like, they just lump into, it's, a, you're old and you have menopause, it could be a, a litany of different things, and so that's what I think I heard you say. It could be, you know, there's all these other systems creating hormones, and then there's stuff in our environment with the xeno. Xenoestrogens. Xenoestrogens that are causing. So there's all sorts of things that are, are, are affecting our balance. And so, and I know you've said this a hundred times, and I, I want you to say it another hundred times, but what I think I heard you say is mineralization. So the thing that you just mentioned, like you kind of thought, well, I'm taking all these minerals, and gosh, I don't need to take my thyroid medicine anymore, and I feel better. So regardless of the source, whether it's your pituitary thyroid, pancreas, adrenal, you know, gonads, just take minerals. Like that's what, right. Cause yeah. irrespective, I take know. minerals. Okay. So mineralization is one getting your yeast under control is another, um, detox because of all these, you know, jump, jump, you know, things, um, <laughs> and Zeno hydration, things, yeah. Zeno things. Those are the things that you do. So let those are, that's kind of the treatment plan that is in your book. So let's talk about a little bit of those. We have about gosh, 12 more minutes. So tell us about, First, the mineralization, and I've read through, like, there's minerals and, er- and herbs, of which there are, like, almost 25 that are possible. There's a lot. <laughs> I may have counted wrong, but there's a lot. So what should I, should I just take a multivitamin, or, like, what what's in my, if I want to do mineralization and get the right herbs, and I'm 50, and all these other things, mm-hmm. what, is there one, two pills that I can take? First of all, I know getting my diet in control and detoxing, but if I were to take, since we're on minerals, what would I, what would I take? I would take Remite. Right, the Remite, but I, I even back up from there and talk about water intake. Okay. You, you have okay. to have enough water. Yes, there we go. Enough water to get into the cells and hydrate the cells and then pull in the minerals and then the minerals mm-hmm. in the cells pulls in more water and they do they do their job by um having enough um or a balance of the two the water and the minerals and even just with the water i start with sea salt and water mm. sea salt or himalayan salt and some people say oh himalayan salt that's a rock and it's in a mountain it's not good because it's not the mountain was at the bottom of the ocean to right. pick up that salt right. originally. So, you know, stop it. Just, <laughs> Just take, take the it. Himalayan salt take and use it. water. How much would you put? How much would you put? Like a teaspoon or what would you do? <laughs> um, excuse me. I have to drink my salted water. <laughs> I'm choking with the excitement. So you take half your body weight in pounds. Okay. So 100 pounds, half of that is 50 ounces a day. Mm -hmm. In each quart of water, that's, what is it, 32 ounces, you put a quarter to a half a teaspoon of sea salt or Himalayan salt. Okay. And you will seriously learn to love the taste and think that plain water is just boring afterwards and and it really gets you drinking water and i can't tell you how many people i I have a weekly radio show right and people just want to i can't believe it i i resisted drinking the water for so long but once i started drinking it and drinking it with the sea salt i feel so much better i recover faster when i exercise um i don't get up at night to urinate because 
the, the water follows the sea salt and your other minerals and stays in the cells and does its thing. Does its metabolism breaks down, the H2O breaks down and, and the, um, the uh, air is, is excreted, you, you breathe out. So the amount of H2O that goes in is not the same amount that comes out mm. because it's being used in metabolism. Oh, for interesting. Okay, so water hydration is one and the mineralization. So what, what should I be taking in terms of minerals? Well, then, you know, to make it easy on people, I tried a two-year wellness program to lay out all the lifestyle. Mm. Nobody wants to do that. Right. Wanted me, give me what to take. Okay. <laughs> so I, I take the Remag. Remag is um, it's 100% absorbed at the cellular level. See, with my heart palpitations and terrible leg cramps and my mild IBS, irritable bowel yeah. syndrome, any pill or powder I took of magnesium caused the laxative effect. Right. So I, I was after mineral companies for 10 years to make a magnesium that had no laxative effect. Nobody was interested uh, because it was like they wanted to be able to. Anyway, they weren't interested. Right. <laughs> so I created Remag. What it is is when, when you have this Remag, it's a magnesium chloride. Mm -hmm. But it's broken down and the ions of magnesium are stabilized so that when this, this uh, mineral is in your body, those ions are on their own and they go right into the cell. Otherwise, a magnesium chloride mineral would have to poke at the cell and hope to break down mm -hmm. at the right time when the cell could absorb it. Mm. So that means the absorption of most minerals is very low. Oh, I see. Okay. Interesting. We know that magnesium um, oxide, for example, is only absorbed 4% into the bloodstream. We do not even have measures for what's going on into the uh, cell. Okay, got it. So the, re the reason why you've just had to make your own, which is Remind, which we can find on your website, drcarolindean.com. Com. <laughs> okay, that's that's actually that's the mineralization part. So you said hydration, mineralization, and those two are tied together because if you actually aren't drinking water, then that's not helpful. Mm -hmm. Then there's getting your yeast down and then detoxing. What are what are those? Right. Well, uh, after the remag, it was a remind with the twelve minerals. Excuse me, we remind. That with the thyroid. Right. And um, with the yeast. You know what happens actually with people who have yeast and they start their remag and remite? Those minerals, by getting into the cells, act as detoxifiers. Mm -hmm. They help numb toxins because it's like, I don't want this heavy mineral metal in here so that they can get rid of lead and mercury from the cells and, mm -hmm. and chemicals and toxins because a certain percentage of people, mostly women, they'll develop rashes and vaginitis yes. when they take their minerals and they get dehydrated because the yeast is detoxing. Oh. These chemicals are detoxing. And then, you know, most people who listen to me, they're already avoiding sugar, avoiding gluten, avoiding dairy because uh, sugar and dairy are sugars that feed yeast. Mm. And it used to be I just told people to avoid wheat, but now I say, oh, you know, gluten. It's gotten so crazy with the gluten, um, the way the, the wheat has been hybridized and all the rest of it. I just say, you might as well just avoid gluten. So these flowers, they break down very readily into glucose molecules. The starch mm. breaks down into sugars. You, I mean, just eat a piece of bread, you know, keep a piece of bread in your mouth for a minute or so. It turns sweet mm -hmm. because it's breaking down into sugar. So you're trying not to feed the yeast and then uh, that's what you avoid, sugar, sugar, gluten and dairy. Uh, you eat garlic, you, um, a lot of people talk about the fermented foods. I think that you should try them. Some people say, well, you know, doesn't fermentation grow yeast? Well, maybe not. You know, you have to try it yourself. Personally, if I eat a quarter cup of sauerkraut, it's game over. Too much gas and bloating. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. Yeah. Right. 
But if I eat a tablespoon or even two a day in my salad, it's just fine. Interesting. So, yeah, it can be just the amount as well. Okay, so and detoxing, you know, detoxing is no gluten, no, um, no, no gluten, no dairy, no sugar. sugar. Yeah. That's what the detoxing part of it, and then also try some as try some of the yeast, like uh, you know the those drinks that they have, those whatever drinks, mm -hmm. uh, and then yes. sauerkraut, fermented kind of pickles. Are those fermented things? Yeah, pickles and pickles are fermented as well. They can be helpful. Kefir is good. Yeah. Unsweetened kefir. Yep, yeah, I've been and you can find check, check, check. Yeah, you I'm... can find lists of these foods. And, <laughs> and the detoxing is happening just by drinking water too, CJ. Right, and the minerals. Like you said, if I so and if I right. so if I were to do Okay, so then it's really just about diet. If I were to do a couple of things, if, like the first line of attack is not like just go take a, you know, rub creams all over myself mm -hmm. and melt all over Hawaii. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> or <Not> my legs. <laughs> yes, exactly. Or taking, you know, taking a pill. It's basically the first line of order is like drink water, take minerals, and then basically try to avoid as much as you can sugar, um, flour, Sugar, gluten, and uh, dairy. yes, non fermented dairy. Non fermented. And actually, I don't know if you came across this. What what the, I also did in in my my protocol is I created a product for detoxification. It's two sulfur based amino acids. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them, uh, methionine, is a precursor to glutathione. Glutathione is the most important antioxidant detoxifier in the, in the body. When I was working with autistic kids, the, the doctors were doing intravenous glutathione for Pete's sakes. Wow. And, you know, pushing the glutathione in liposomal form and, uh, and very expensive as well. And I realized with those protocols and, and also the chelation protocols, yes. you know, where they do intravenous EDTA, you can force too much um, detoxification on a person and they're as i say too toxic to detox oh interesting and okay so what i do is with this realign product is give them the precursors to the glutathione so their their body can make it when it wants to mm. there's no forcing about it and the other there's a taurine amino acid which is also supportive of the heart Taurine and methionine are both sulfur-based. Sulfur is ex it's extremely important for the salvation detoxification pathways in the liver. Mm. And added to the formula, I have four methylated B vitamins. Because okay. what's happened, and in your life coaching, I'm sure you've heard of people, oh, now I have MTHFR uh, genetic abnormality, which means I can't methylate, and now I'm doomed. All this genetic <laughs> testing by the alternative medicine doctors drives me crazy. Right. Because they're, they're oh, here's the top, top 100 uh, genetic abnormalities you have. I mean, you cannot throw that at people and expect them to be sane about, you know, oh my gosh. Right. Because genes really don't control us. What controls us is the epigenetic factors that turn genes on and off. And I have a ton, just I'm um, just to wrap up, I uh, go on to the Fired Up with CJ Facebook page, YouTube channel, website, www.firedupwithcj.com. Also check out drcarolyndean.com's website because then you can get the Remite. Tell me the products that, so if I wanted to like, okay, if I'm like, give me a pill, you're like, okay, here, yeah, yeah. <laughs> drink water, drink, you know, whatever your way divided by two, whatever that, go back and listen. So drink water, <laughs> get the, get the re, remite. Remag, remind, realign. Okay. And then when you're really into all of that, do RNA drops, which is our miracle be, uh, what is it? Barley sprouts, non-gluten barley sprouts. That's cotton. And if I'm like, okay, and then I'm, let's say I'm one of those kind of uh, suspicious types. I'm like, I'm not taking her stuff. She's just trying to make me take her stuff, right? Exactly. Right. And so if I, am I, if I'm like that, I could try a, a multivitamin. Like, what's the alternative? Like, I don't believe in this stuff, but look, I'll try it. Uh, what's the 
What are some alternatives? We can take a multi, is there a multivitamin that you recommend and a mineral thing? Yes, all of that is on my resources page. Okay. Um, I make sure uh, people get food-based uh, and organic supplements because the synthetics are, are just so, 99% of supplements are synthetic. Okay. And then the minerals, most of them aren't absorbed. But yeah, I, I know, I, I do hear from people who say, oh, you're just trying to sell me something. Right. And I said, well, you know, look at the first 45 years of my career right. when I wasn't selling you something. And most of my information is freely available. And people can choose what they want. But what we invariably hear is, yeah, you know, I, I tried all kinds of other magnesiums, but it wasn't until I got to Remag that I really found I was absorbing it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not apologizing anymore for having problems. Right, people. yeah. Well, you tried to get the pharma, you try to get those vitamin companies to do it, and they weren't. So it's like you're forcing me to make these things so that they work. Um, okay, so we actually have to wrap up. Thank you so much. I could talk to you forever. Thank you. We have Dr. Carolyn Dean. She's talking about um, her her work on hormones, 50 years of, of hormones and other things. Go to drcarolyndean.com. Thank you so much. Thank you, CJ. Great interview. It means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support, love, and blessings.